Love Talk Radio. All right, Hector. I've got one thing to say to you today. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so it's New Year's Eve. All right. So it wasn't quite New Year yet. I figure there's no reason to waste good confetti without, you know, because I won't be here tomorrow to do the episode, so I thought I'd get a jump on it a little bit. And for our listeners out there, do not try and call in because you won't get us because we're home with our wives and family. With our hangovers. Our, yeah. <laughs> and doing other things. But definitely listen to the show because it'll have a lot of really cool stuff today. So what is today's show? Today's show is all about Google watching you. Okay. It's not just Google. If you're on the internet, it's not just corporations and stuff. Yeah. You've got the NSA watching you. you got the software that you're using is watching you. you got confetti you're, watching you. you got confetti on you watching you. I mean, that, that might have been one of those like them tabs that they use to you know, measure your credit card and stuff like that. Well, before we get down to the you know, nitty gritty of the, of the episode today, I also want to point out the fact that we have some other people watching us and that's mostly our sponsors. Right. And we want people to be watching them. And you can find both uh, via eSig and Tub King on our workingthewebtowin.com site. And we uh, highly encourage you to buy their products. I mean, they have great products. Both via E is something that it's a product. If you're a smoker, this is a much better product for you. And of course, if you take best, Tub King <laughs> stuff is really the best stuff to take best. <laughs> um, so we're going to get deep into Google. We'll start out with, we'll, let's just jump on Google's case for a little while. And I was typing an email the other day. And I type in the words, I have an attachment. And I, I, then I didn't attach attachment. So I go send it and it stops and says, did you mean to attach something? Because you left an attachment out. And I'm like, how does it know I left my attachment yeah, out? As a matter of fact, as I, as I remember, you <laughs> ran out of your room, your, your office, and like, hey, Google knows I didn't put an attachment on here. What the heck's going on? So I, I immediately made a screen print so I could do it. I say, we need to do a show on this right away. Because, again, that's not just one of the, But that one yeah. was so obvious that they're, they're watching you. It's not funny. I mean, I've always said in the past, when you're in your in Gmail, you see the little ads that are running on right. you and stuff like that. So you know that they're watching you in there, but... You know what really bothers me, okay, because I don't do a lot of tech things. I'm one of the few people that uses one of these, you know, to actually to make call, phone calls. Call yeah, I, I use most of your phone calls. I have very few apps on it. I will occasionally text. But here's the thing. I'm trying to text the address. In fact, it was our uh, producer because we we're going over to his house. I'm trying to text it to somebody, and, and, the, and it's actually on intracoastal. Right. Well, I would put in intra... And put, try to put in coastal, and it kept changing it to intra, intracranial. Yeah. I and it, it's like... Excuse me, and I'd go back thinking I did something wrong, and every time I would do that, it's like, how the heck, so I ended up spelling intracoastal, I-N-T-R-A-C-O-A-S-T-L. It was only that actually again, again, get close. that's not Google doing it. It's, it's the typer, it's the keyboard in your phone that's messing with you. Somebody's I, messing with me, damn it. <laughs> and again... I mean, I've had to put up with that for years when I've got Word, you know, as I was changing things or word is capitalizing things I didn't want capitalized or uncapitalizing things I wanted to capitalize. Or changing or putting the wrong word in yeah. or fixing a word that you didn't want fixed. I mean, here's another example that I found. If you, every once in a while you're talking to tech support and they want your IP address. Wow. If you go into Google search and type in what is my IP address, mm -hmm. it'll bring up programs that let you find your IP address. But guess what? Google tells you your IP address. <laughs> you don't even have to look it up anymore. Mm. And what's amazing about that, if you know your IP address, right. Plug into any IP program because there's lots of programs that'll tell you where you are. Right. Those programs will give you your latitude and longitude, and then you can take <laughs> that latitude and longitude and plug that into Google Maps, and it'll show you where you are. And that's why Google wants to track, you know, your IP address. Yeah, I, they always ask you, "Can I track your IP address?" Speaking of Google Maps, I think pretty much in, in, <laughs> in the not too distant future, you'll type in your address. You'll be sitting out back, and you'll be able to go. Well, and wave at the satellite going over because it'll be live. Actually, I, I found an article that the guy was talking about, you know, how you know that they're, they're following you. Yeah. Well, they had like 20 pictures of different people. Like oh, yeah. Some of them were obscene that they got caught yeah. by the satellite and so on. But, you know, Google gets all the press because obviously they've got all the money. Right. You know, I saw several different uh, articles and blogs on, you know, Google getting tagged by, you know, even countries. France was suing them for $17 million right. for what they said was privacy violations, right. and Germany times. did it, you know, there are a bunch of different places. Here's one, and it says, Google in the dock over internet privacy as it attempts to have spying case struck out because British courts have no jurisdiction over the lawsuit. Yeah. 
Well, the funny thing about that, all that started in June or July, yeah. around when the Snowden thing started, I think. Right. And one of the things that happened was there's a, a independent company called uh, Free, uh, Free Author, no, Free Arts and Technologies, okay? And they came up with a little applet that you could plug into Chrome or, or Firefox. Right. And what it would do is every time Google would send stuff home, an alarm would go off. <laughs> but the problem with it is it would go off like every second because Google was tracking everything, <laughs> literally. <laughs> and now when you try and go and load it on there, you can't because Google blocks it. Yeah, well, here's, here's one about a uh, Berlin court ruling, and, and I liked it because it's got Google, and you see the yeah, eyeballs yeah. peeking at you through the page, and that's pretty much the way most people feel about it. Yeah. But it's not it's not getting better, and like you said, it's not just Google doing it. I mean, all of them are doing Facebook's doing it, Twitter's doing right. it, pretty much anybody that you're logged into is doing it. You were saying, what was it, ga some gaming console was making you log in before you could play the now, game? Now the new Xbox yeah. One, you yeah. have to log in. Before you can even and play anything. that's a Microsoft anything. product, right? right? It's a Microsoft product. I went out and I found a list of items that Google uses to track people. So I'll go through my list as quickly as possible. And we only have 30 minutes here. Yeah. So if you're have, if you have, using Google Search, right. it's tracking you. If you're using web crawlers, which, again, Google uses those. Those are using it to track mm -hmm. you. If you're using analytics, mm -hmm. analytics are used to track you in lots of different ways. If you're, doing ad, if you're running ads on your sites for Google, then right. you're tracking that. If you're using Gmail, they're tracking that. If you're tweeting, Google tracks tweets because Twitter yeah. sells their feed right. directly to Google. Um, if you're using any Google app whatsoever, Google Docs, Google Spreadsheet, Calendar, and so on, those are all being tracked. Uh, if you have a Google public profile right. that's tracking you, mm -hmm. um, there's some of them that I never heard of, like Orkut. I never heard of what that one is. But if you have a public DNS, if you're using Google Chrome, obviously, if you're using Google Finance, you, YouTube, Google Translate, Google Books, Google Reader, Google Feed Burner, Google Maps, Google Earth, and coming soon, whatever that is. I mean. Yeah, and if that isn't scary enough, you know, I'll always say, who's watching the watchers? But we know who's digging into Google, right? right. NSA. Right. And in fact, right now, even, even the Supreme Court has started to get a little tired with the uh, liberties that they're taking with not only just online information, but, you know, cell phone information. Right. Well, this is the thing. The NSA couldn't even do any stuff if these companies weren't recording all this stuff. Right. They may, well, actually, they could, but they're making it easy for them. Right. Now they can right. just go in there and say, well, give me those 12 terabytes of data <laughs> on that little section of the country because we just want to check it out. <laughs> because I remember a story. This was, I don't know, 15 years ago, you know, practically before the, the uh, web was around, where the NSA, or it wasn't the NSA, it was actually the FBI. They had some type of black boxes that were right. being plugged into the phone systems. Right. So they, they were literally tracking every... And it, at that time, they were only doing it to offshore, which was weird because FBI is right. supposed to be offshore, domestic, right? right. right. And they were, they were, they were actually, uh, I guess, listening into all of the traffic going overseas. And they literally had a splitter in the, uh, the, you know, the Bell Telephone switching centers that was giving them real-time access to this stuff. And, they and then eventually they, they found out about that. And they got, and, and they got shut down. Then they got shut down. But now they're not even trying to shut them down. Yeah, here's an uh, interesting thing. I read when they were talking about Google, you know, tracking you and Facebook tracking and all that. Well, Nordstrom, which is a big department store, right. was tracking people with their cell phones. Oh, yeah. So when you walked in the store, oh, yeah. it would track your IP and your phone. Right. So if you went over to women's clothing, well, and you were there and so on. Well, remember last last. Uh, sometime in 2013, we did an episode, and I talked about trash cans that they had in, right. in London right. that were the same thing, where they would literally, they were tracking people because it was set up in front of a mall, and they would find out where you were going, how long you were spending inside. This It was right inside the trash can. It was right. basically accessing your cell phone. It was tracking the MAC address in yeah. your cell phone. And, again, if you go to the, the notes section of the blog, right. you'll be able to find pictures and, and give you diagrams on how right. all this stuff happens to, but that's a pretty common thing that retailers are doing. So we're not just talking Google and so on. This mm -hmm. is a big retailer, and they got caught with their pants down. Yeah, well, yeah. What, I, what I like is the people that are making the, the most noise. <laughs> One of them, of course, is Microsoft. They have that Scroogle campaign. Right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and Microsoft has, has got the T-shirt saying that Google's watching you, and yet they're watching you as much as... They're the ones Absolutely. who's got the new Xbox where you've got to log in. That's right. And, and again, all their software watches you, 
And then the software watches the software because they want to make sure that you have the genuine product. That's right. <laughs> so it's basically the pot calling the kettle black. All right, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, I'm sure Apple does similar types of things. Oh, you know? we know. They, 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 they're the ones that pioneered a lot of this right. stuff. Come on, let's be honest. So, you know, people, you know, they have to understand. If you're on the Internet, you're yeah. being watched by a bunch of people. Now, at the right. end of the show, we'll talk about some possible things you can do to help yourself. Right. If you're using Chrome, obviously, you, you, if you think incognito is incognito, you understand it's really not incognito. They're still tracking you no matter what. You're yeah, doing. we'll talk more about that in a few minutes. <laughs> but, but a lot of the things, too, is, is like right here it says Google was criticized for moving the vital privacy feature with An Android 4.42. Right. <laughs> so, whereas a lot of these things where you could literally go in there and set the privacy settings. Right, they've turned it off. They're eliminating your ability to even do that. Right. And I think that's where the general public really has to get up in arms, and there have to be some pretty big lawsuits for boycotts to, to I mean, make them turn that stuff yeah, back on. Absolutely. Because again, we should have the ability to stop them from tracking us 19 ways from something. No matter what, they're going to be able to track us some. But you don't want to make it so damn easy that they can yeah. track everything on the planet. Well, I mean, it's getting to the point now. Where, you know, if you're outside and you sneeze, you know, right. they're going to say, "Bless you." Well, the reality is, again, if you want to put a plug in some of the holes. You can't plug all of them, but you can plug, plug in some of the holes. What you can do is you can search, do a search, and I would tell you, maybe do a Yahoo search instead right. of a Google search, because you know Google's watching you, they're mm -hmm. trying to plug the hole. Right. But do a privacy search, and you, if you say privacy plugins or privacy software, mm -hmm. security software, you'll come up with a whole bunch of stuff. A lot of this stuff is not new. I mean, pretty good encryption. Mm -hmm. It's been around for a long time. That's right. how... Some of the criminals were doing the Bitcoin uh, right. gig here not very long ago that yeah. we talked about. But, you know, it's not just the companies, too. I mean, even even individuals, you know, have to register. Google Glass is a prime example right. of that. In fact, here, here's an article I had. I'll read just a, a little paragraph from it because it's kind of interesting. Okay. It says, Carolyn and her business partner, Greg, were eating breakfast in a bakery in Florida recently, each wearing Google Glass, but actually immersed in their smartphones when they were accosted by an angry stranger. They said, though they'd only had the devices for about a month, they become accustomed to curious people approaching them like they were some kind of celebrities, peppering them with questions about the still rare technology and asking to try it on and even getting their pictures taken wearing it. I said, but the man in the bakery didn't want a demonstration. No, he was interested in, in a confrontation. He asked if they would be comfortable with him recording a video of them on his phone, which violated their privacy and rights in the same way he felt they were violating his by wearing the recording devices on their face in public. I'm just wondering, they so yeah, pull out your phone, go ahead and start filming. That's what I would have said. And at that point, I would have turned Who's on... Who's at 11? And at that point, I would have turned on the camera on the Google Glass, right. you know. Because that's the thing. Google it, it, Glass, we've been, record. We've been seeing this a lot. In fact, what was it? That one guy that had made his own... It wasn't Google Glass, it was before right. Google Glass, but it was a wearable computer. And this thing was literally right. bolted Why? to this bolted. guy's head. Yeah, the guy and he went out in France. Yeah, in a McDonald's. Right. Right. Because they were they were you know affronted by him coming in with a camera, but, but like we point out, everybody that's got a smartphone has a camera. Right. I don't see anybody getting thrown out of eateries because they're carrying their smartphone. Around. Literally, if you want to, if I wanted to videotape, all I have to do is put it there, lean it up, and hit the button. Right. You'd never know. Uh, there so where do you people, the line? people do that stuff. As a matter of fact, they have all kinds of tiny miniaturized cameras and stuff yeah. like that. They're used by. The police and the FBI and criminals. But I mean, they're being used by individuals. To everybody, everybody's got one now. Well, we we talked about the Black Hat Convention yeah. and them selling on. Again, if they can record you saying anything about, you know, your credit card or your phone number, they put cameras by the bank. So when you use your card, they can record the sound that the card makes. Yeah. And and film you keying in the key code. Mm -hmm. So if they have those two things, they can make your card. But you were talking about what you could ultimately use some of these videos for, and there's actually there's a uh, uh, website called College Humor, and they decided to take on Google's privacy concerns by putting a little tongue-in-cheek video together, and it's called Google is going to blackmail you, and they actually created a little video. I'm going to play part of it. I don't think you've seen this yet. It's kind of funny. We'll play the whole thing because it's two minutes, but we'll play a little bit of it. Here at Google, we've been trying pretty hard to get you to use Google+. We've even gone so far as to make you sign up for Google+, to comment on YouTube. 
but a lot of you still don't seem to want to play ball. That's why we're proud to introduce Google Blackmail, a free new service that works like this. Either you sign up for Google+, Plus, or we release all the private information we know about you. You see, incognito mode was a straight-up lie. And thanks to Blackmail, if you don't do what we say, we are prepared to tell all of your friends and family that your search history includes... And then they go into a lot. Of, you can watch it online if you want. But but it's kind of it's kind of a tongue in cheek approach to what people are really afraid about. You know, is yeah. with all this information that's run amok out there, and people just gathering it up. You know, in land office fashion. Sooner or later, that's what's going to happen. I think that probably is going to be the next big thing. Well, will be literally to, virtual blackmail. I used to think that you know they didn't have enough computers to store this stuff. Yeah. But obviously, storage is cheap, and they've got. You know, miles of computers and all this stuff. Um, I know before the shows, I wanted to talk a little bit about what can people do, maybe to protect themselves a little bit. Um, I, the first thing I would tell you, if, if you want some protection with a browser, mm -hmm. you don't want to use a Microsoft browser because right. Microsoft is spying on you. You don't want to use Google. a Google browser because mm -hmm. Google is spying mm -hmm. on you. You don't want to use an Apple right. browser because Apple is spying on you. But what's that leave? Well, that leaves essentially Firefox. You know, and that's a product that you can use. Well, they also use Ovation. Okay. And those are two products that are third-party products. There's probably a dozen, you know, Unix, Linux type browser type products out there. That oh, in fact, there are, quite, there are several on the, that are up on the market because of this that mm -hmm. actually are, are built to provide you with right. protection. I guess a lot of the guys that ran Silk Road were using right. that kind of technology. Yeah. Because that's where it comes from, you know. All the all the protections come from military, more or less. Well, I, I would say that again that if you have Firefox, there are plugins that you can get from Firefox that mm -hmm. are pretty cool. So there's one called Privacy and Security. There's another one that I found that I've actually run it on mine. That if Google still tries to put cookies on your machine, it it, it erases them. Mm -hmm. So those are kinds of cool things. Um, there are specific things that you can plug in for Outlook if you're an Outlook user. That can give you some additional privacy, and of course, you can use pretty good encryption uh, plugins that you can use in a lot of these different programs. So, if you want to sell, send an email that's encrypted, it's mm -hmm. pretty hard to break through that kind of stuff. Uh, obviously, in the uh, GNU world, which is uh, or G GNU world, if you want to call it, uh, but there's a lot of private stuff that you can use in the Unix world, mm -hmm. uh, like you were saying earlier. Um, there are also there's some search engines that you can get out there that don't do any kind of tracking whatsoever. So, uh, here's one product that I found that I thought was pretty. It's called SurfEasy. It vows to uh, produce plug-in privacy. So you can get their plug-in and put it in your program. I know that when a lot of this stuff was breaking in July, June, July, there was this app that you could plug in and it did the alarms. Mm -hmm. Well, now if you try and plug that in Firefox or in Chrome, it won't work. Because it, it says that it only works in version 1.1 or whatever, that kind of thing. But Google Chrome blocks it from, right. from loading. It literally says that. So, <laughs> um, so once again, they're foiling your protections. They're, they're, they're not wanting yeah. you to be protected. Uh, several of the antivirus companies are coming out with additional plugins for their stuff to give you some additional protection. And again, because they're not tied to Google or whoever. Yeah, and, and I think that, that, that the companies also need to review their privacy policies and establish right. privacy policies. It's just as we always talk about the fact that most people are, are totally unprepared for the kind of attacks that, that are very easy for the bad guys to spawn online. Well, it's the same thing with uh, companies. A lot of them, they have antiquated or non-existent privacy policies. Because remember there was that one story we were talking about right. earlier in the year where a company thought that they were literally being yeah, spied on. Right. And they hired a company, and they were literally getting ready to take all their employees downstairs and, you know, do the rubber hose polygraph kind right. of thing. And the person that was running their uh, security service said, wait, but before we do that, why don't I just check and see exactly what your yeah, so what you, your staff is doing on a normal basis? You followed them around. Turned out that it was Foursquare, yeah. and they were literally telling everybody that wanted to hear not only where they would be, who they were with, what the results of it. So... They need to spy. You're literally putting the information out to the public. Right. They were they were talking about stuff that they shouldn't have been talking about right. on social media, and tell them all. And again, if you were spying on them, all you had to do is follow them around. And a that's bit. exactly what happened. That's why the competition got the jump on them because they were just making it easy. You know, you don't need to you don't need to spend a lot of money or hack into somebody's operation if they're just going to spill the beans. That's why I tell you. I mean, they, if you're using social media to communicate with your friends, you need to do it in a way that's private. And again, right. you can you can send private messages on LinkedIn, Facebook. 
Twitter, Google Plus even. Mm -hmm. Semi-private when I say Google Plus. <laughs> because I'm sure Google's read it in some way, shape, or form. Um, I would also tell you to look at your antivirus if you have AVG or Trend or any of those kinds of products out there. See what kind of additional add-ins or plugins there. They are working to, to plug some of these gaps because they see it as an opportunity mm -hmm. to make money, to differentiate themselves from the market in general. There are also products out there like this one that's called Ghostery. And their, their motto is, knowledge plus control equals privacy. I haven't tried it. I mean, you can, there's a little video that goes with it, so I'll play a little bit of it. Every Friday after work, John goes to the corner to get two slices of his favorite kind of pizza, pepper and onion. Since he's in there so much, by the time John gets there, the slices are already in the oven heating up for him. John really likes being a regular. One day, John decides to try a different spot to eat. When he walks in, he sees something familiar. Two slices of pepper and onion pizza. This is strange, because John never told this shop owner what he liked. When John asks how he knew what kind of pizza he liked, the pizza guy tells him he received it from the Pizza Preference Partnership, which is tracking everything pizza-related that John does, packaging this information, and then trading it a million times a day with other people's information. The invisible internet works the same way. Everything you click on, hover over, buy, sell, or view is being tracked by thousands of companies. Ghostery shows you every company that's tracking you when you visit a web page and lets you choose whether or not they can continue to gather your information. Instead of just offering an all or nothing type of choice about blocking, Ghostery works to help you understand the types of data being collected and how it might be used. Then, you can make a meaningful choice about what you're comfortable sharing and what you'd like to keep to yourself. So that's a service. Yeah, again, they're, they're not the only one. There are other companies that are coming out with these Well, you know how you find all these services, right? You look. You Google it. You Google. <laughs> or you Yahoo it. You know, or you Bing it. I know, we're talking about Google. <laughs> I couldn't resist. And even if, again, if you're Yahoo it, don't think Yahoo's innocent by any stretch no. of imagination. They Bing. all do it. I mean, Bing they is Microsoft. It. Yeah. And Microsoft is also in bed with Yahoo because yeah. they're the enemy of my enemy is my friend and all yeah. that. Speaking, speaking of the enemy of our enemy, you know, let's, let's talk one more time about the uh, NSA because I found another little tidbit about them. It says, NSA ruling judge overlooks weird claim. <laughs> weird. You find weird. It's not like the World Wide Web. <laughs> well, it says, it says, this is, they're talking about a, uh, as a lawsuit, it, 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 probably the NSA, it says the lead plaintiff actually claimed that the government had secretly sent text messages from his account to his clients. It says the judge decided not to focus uh, on the odd assertion, but instead ruled against NSA's routine collection and analysis of vast amounts of phone call data. I think they saw that little thing with the Google uh, uh, blackmail. I think they're doing the same thing, you know. Or it could have been like, you know, when the election was going on and, and the guy said, I didn't text her at 3 in the morning. It was, it was really the NSA. <laughs> well, we recently had that happen to one of our clients where they... they, they they contacted somebody that had filled out the, a form, online form, and then as soon as they contacted the person, the person said to them, well, I don't rule out that online form. And when you look at the form, it not only has their name and their email address, but their phone number. Right. So it was like, well, either you did it or somebody who knows you really, really good did it right. because guess what? It didn't pop in there by itself. Right. So that's the thing that sometimes, you know, people can have these weird claims because they just forget. And I want to point out to people that, you know, we're not just talking about your computer. Mm -hmm or your smartphone, or your cell phone, or your tablet. I mean, I'm looking at a commercial right now on the screen, and it's got this thing called Chromecast. Guess what that is? It's a Google device that you plug into your TV. Well, if you also have a smart TV or a dumb TV that you stick Chromecast in... Yeah. Is it with a G-Box? Right, yeah, or any of those other kinds of things that make your computer, so your TV so it can be a a Chrome device or an Android device. You're just giving somebody a you're, access to your watch. You're, you're being tracked. Yeah, now, right. now you're watching TV, <laughs> and they're watching you watching TV. That's right. It's, it doesn't take Nielsen anymore, right? right yeah. It's just at at least it's now. more accurate than Nielsen. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's the thing. Yeah. They know that we're really doing that. And plus, they can record gobs and gobs of data. Uh, I know that uh, next week we have, which was next week's show, is uh, humor. Of, yeah. Humor is a weapon of mass distraction. Now, you need to tell me a little bit about what's going to be in the show, because I think, you know, people might be misconstrued what we're going to be talking about. Well, you know, actually, we uh, we always talk about the fact that humor sells online. Right. 
And, you know, everybody's familiar with, like, the Aflac Duck or the Geico Gecko. Right. But what you don't realize is that there are actually some other very big players that are using humor online that you may never have heard about. So we're going to go in there, and we're actually going to explore not only who are some of the big players and big winners who, you know, big multi-million dollars using things like YouTube as right. a, uh, you know, mass marketing vehicle, but we're also going to talk about what it is, what it takes for you, in other words, a business owner, right. to develop their own campaign using those types of techniques. Well, here's, here's one of the things that I remember when business owners come to us, they always say, I want to do a video. Right. And they're usually talking about doing a commercial. Right. And, and they really they don't, don't understand. Right. That's not the best the way People to do don't it. want commercials. No. I mean, they're tired of commercials. They're, that's why nobody wants to watch TV. That's why Netflix. Unless it's is, a Super Bowl. Yeah. But even mm -hmm. Netflix, it's like taken off. And the Super Bowl, a lot of the commercials, mm -hmm. they're all funny. Right. I mean, that's the reason they watch the commercials on that's the right. Super Bowl is because they know that's they're right. upscaling the funniness on them. That's right. Uh, after that, you know, we'll be talking about uh, the great new tech items for next year. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, last year we did next tech. the Star Trek one we talked about. We did mm -hmm. the 3D printer. Mm -hmm. There's all kinds of really cool new things that are coming out. I just saw the new Superman movie. And when I was watching the Superman movie, I noticed that a lot of stuff looked like 3D printers were making this stuff, except they were doing it really fast. <laughs> so I hope you haven't seen the movie. It, it, it looks, you know, it's got some really cool ideas. It's more like molecular manipulation right but it just reminded me of the 3d printer yeah. making these things well you know now, now they've got now they're looking at doing 3d printers that can print entire houses yeah and not only for here but they're talking about that'd be the technology if we ever so decide say, to go to Mars, the moon or Mars, Mars. Right. Or either one you can, and, and you know. again they're gonna use that technology to be able to you know fix things in space mm -hmm. because eventually build things in space because you, you know? can't carry all that stuff out there with no, you exactly you can't take the, the full parts guide you know I, my washer and dryer is broken well Imagine carrying the stuff out into space. That ain't going to happen. And again, I want to thank our sponsors, Thea E and uh, Tough, Tough King. King, right? And uh, before we, we end, I had a uh, little, I, you know, sometimes we do our little Worldwide Weird yep. episode. So I want to I want to have one little Worldwide Weird comment in here. Because this, this one was really out there, literally. Uh, physics Breakthrough is the universe a giant hologram. And the uh, this was done actually by a scientist. This is not a joke. Yeah, that's and, a real article. I remember reading it. Yeah, and he said, literally, we could be living inside a giant 3D projection of what is actually a two-dimensional space. So, in other words, similar to an IMAX movie. Yeah, right. You know, well, you know, I'm, I'm here to say this, and you can quote me on this. There is absolutely no truth that the universe is a hologram. There's no such thing as a matrix. Okay? Take my word. So, we have uh, about 20 seconds left. I just want to wish you and your family Happy New Year! Happy New Year! Keep working the web to win! <laughs>